Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's tech tip. I uh, wanted to show you how to create a editable either PDF or picture. Um, during distance, distance learning, I know some of you have uh, documents that you want to use. However, they were not, you're not able to edit them. So I'm going to show you how to create an editable uh, PDF or picture. You can even upload a picture to this and do the same thing that I'm going to show you how to do. So all of those uh, worksheets that you have or documents that you want that were not editable, editable because they weren't in Google Docs or something like that, this is a way to quickly do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a snapshot of this. And all I did was Google this uh, as a biology worksheet. Uh, again, you can upload your own picture. If you take a picture of the document you want, you can do the same process on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a screenshot. And because I'm on a Mac, I'm going to use Command Shift 4. On a PC, you can use the Windows key plus the print screen, and that will take a screenshot for you. You can also use the snipping tool uh, if you decide to do it that way. So I'm going to hit Shift Command 4. And I'm going to get my little crosshairs here. And I'm going to take a picture of what I want. Now, once I have that created, it's going to save onto my desktop. You're going to have to find out where yours goes. Uh, but as I move through, I'm going to show you how to find that as well. So I'm going to open Google Slides. And I'm going to open a blank document. Okay. Now, what you'll notice is that this blank document is not in the same dimensions as a sheet of paper is, what, is, is really what you want. So we're going to change that. We're going to go to File. And we're going to go to Page Setup. And when I hit page setup, it prompts me to choose. Now you'll notice that there's not an eight and a half by 11 in here. So I'm gonna hit custom and I'm gonna change this to 8.5 by 11 inches. And I'm gonna apply it. Now what you'll notice is it looks like a sheet of paper. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to delete these text boxes because I don't want them. And if you click on the little box up here, they're easy to delete. Oops. It is and there they go and they're all gone so now what I want to do is I want to make my image my background so I'm gonna go to this button here background and I'm gonna choose my image it's gonna prompt me with this insert background image I uploaded mine or I downloaded mine um, to my computer so I'm going to upload it and hit browse and I'm gonna find my screenshot up here these are my recents so I'm going to hit the last one that I did and I'm going to hit open and press done. And you'll notice that that is now my background. Now I want to make it my background so that it doesn't move around. The only thing I want to be able to move around on my own is the text box. So this is kind of like an image that we're just kind of superimposing a text box on top of. So I'm going to make this a little bit larger for you and for me, to be honest with you. So now that I have this image, I want the students to be allowed to fill in the blank with the appropriate terms. I also want them to put a name and a class and a date. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this text box up here and I'm going to click on it and you see the crosshairs and I'm going to create a text box. Now, if I click out of that, students aren't going to be able to see it. So if you have older students who are used to this, they'll be able to know there's a text box or if you explain that, sometimes people like to type click here or answer here. You can do that as well. It's just kind of whatever you prefer. What I like to do is I click on that box. It's still there, but I go to the bucket and I want to fill it with a color. So that way it's definitely there. The kids definitely know that they have to fill it in. And so this is a good indicator for me and for my students that there's something there that has to be done. Okay, I'm going to show you again, hit text box. I'm going to go to the next one and I'm going to put it in there. And now it's automatically filled. If yours doesn't automatically fill, you can hit the bucket again and fill it with whatever color. I choose yellow because it's kind of bright and, and I like it. Um, but that's the way that you um, add a text box. Okay, here's one more for you. Okay, once again, and that time it didn't fill. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to hit the yellow. Okay, This is how you can go through and put, put these places, the text box places that you want the students to answer. You can make them larger or smaller by adjusting the box here. Okay. Now, before you assign these to students, remember that you have to share it. Okay. I'm going to give this a presentation title before I do that. Okay. And I'm going to go up here to share, click on that, and I'm going to click get a link. 
and I want it, I normally put it to anyone with a link and I want to make sure that they're a viewer. So I'm going to hit done. Actually, I'm going to hit done. Sorry. Um, and then what I want to do, because I want the students to be forced to make a copy of the link, is I'm going to take off that last part that said edit. And I'm going to hit copy or I'm going to type in copy and then I'm going to hit return. And now if I take this URL, I can paste it and it will force students to make a copy of their own. Okay, this is uh, an easy way to do that. I know you can use Adobe to do it, but this is an opportunity that people have to not use Adobe if you don't have it, but to take pictures and PDFs and make them editable. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this tech tip.